You haven't met your soulmate if you're not ready to let go of your bullshit. Grand rising, beautiful kings and queens, and welcome to A Mother's Touch Radio. I am your host, Coach Susie, the PTSD Confidence Coach, and this is Loving Yourself Unconditionally Beyond Abuse. You haven't met your soulmate if you're not ready to let go of your bullshit. What do I mean by that? Your true soulmate is not a connection with someone you have everything in common with. Your soulmate is not a connection that is perfect. That is, um, that is, uh, no, sh you know, like, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, uh, you know how people will be like, um, like the perfect fit, you know, like, well, I don't want to say the perfect fit because your soulmate is your perfect fit, but you know, like the, the fit that's everybody's like, oh, we have everything in common. Like, um, we do everything together and all this other stuff, right? No, no, your soulmate is the one who shines a bright light on all your insecurities <laughs> and the bullshit stories you keep holding on to of why you're not good enough for a healthy, happy, fun, loving, committed, peaceful, and monogamous relationship. So a soulmate is someone you vibe with on every level. You vibe with them mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, relationally, and financially. You know, it's, it's a holistic relationship between two people who know how to take care of themselves individually. Therefore, they speak each other's love language intuitively. Um, uh, if you meet your soulmate before you've taken the necessary time to heal your traumas and insecurities, you will begin projecting that towards them, you know? Um, and sometimes you guys need to separate before you can come back and truly appreciate each other. So a lot of people call it a, a twin flame, but I, you know, I, I really don't focus so much on the labels. I focus on the connection, you know, because your soulmate is really going to just really put a mirror up to you. It really is a reflection and it's, it's showing you everything that's holding you back, your addictions, your excuses, um, your game, the games that you're playing with other people. That that story, that victim story you've been holding on to for years, you blaming people, you know, for why you're the way that you are. Um, you know, a soulmate relationship is really a team and collaborative connection because that connection alone will help other people to um, grow in love for themselves and others too. You know, because when you and your soulmate come together, everybody can see it. Like, like y'all just radiate love. Like it's nothing but love. And because a lot of people settled in their relationships, they, they're not happy with that and and they don't they don't want you to be happy especially if you're in separation with your um, soulmate like if you guys had to separate to grow you have a lot of third-party people involved you know that are that you know I've said before that we don't we don't wrestle with flesh and blood we, we wrestle with spirits you know and a lot of people are continuing to hold on to other people that they know are not their soulmates, you know. They use manipulation and control and you even have family members that, you know, that when, whenever you come back from being with your soulmate or you and your soulmate interact or even if y'all in separation because your soulmate is always within you, right? That soul is always in you. So when you... When you're spending time by yourself and you're glowing, that really is 
you know, your soul glowing. So your soulmate helps you whether you're together or not. And you know when people... If a person is trying to control another person, then they haven't met their soulmate because your soulmate is going to wake your ass up, literally. Like, wake you up, and you're going to be like, oh, my goodness, like, I got to get my shit together because this is what I want. This is the type of relationship that I want, you know, um, because it's, it's pretty much effortless. Like, y'all just flow together. Like, it's... It's like no other relationship that you've ever had before in your life. Like it just comes naturally. And it comes naturally because you're with your own soul. It's just another soul in a different body. That's all that it is. You know, and um, that's how you know it's your soulmate. And I know I say, you know, um, that I want, I, I would like a masculine, you know. A masculine body you know but if we were all souls I don't think that we would pay so much attention to that but because we're a human and a soul sometimes we do pay attention to that and then other times we don't you know that's why I tell people like I don't I don't knock anybody for what they do because I don't know what their soul is telling them to do I don't you know but because I've already met my soulmate I know that's who I want <laughs> And, but the thing, the beautiful thing is, is that I needed the separation to know that even if we don't come back together, guess what? I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Because I used, there used to be times where I just, I would cry all the time, you know? And now, when I think about the connection, I'm okay. I, like, like, I have no need to, you know, like before it was like this, this need to have a life with him, you know? And, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, if, if we get back together and, and, and grow a friendship, you know, that I wouldn't want that, because I absolutely do. But what I'm saying is that because I know how to live without him, I can live without him, no matter how hard that may be, you know? Um, and, you know, I haven't, well, I've known that, you know, from the beginning that he was someone special in my life. I really didn't know, you know, I would talk about soulmates and all that other stuff, but I really didn't learn about Twin Flames until we separated. And then that's when everything just started popping up, you know, and I started learning about it. And I started to piece stuff together, but I still was in a lot of doubt. I still had a lot of doubt, like... Like, no, this is not possible. Like, how is this possible? You know, still questioning things. And and then I was paying a lot of attention to what was going on outside. So, you know, like checking his pro, you know, like stalking his social media and stuff like that. And then seeing him with other people. And it was like, you know, well, this this is not my soulmate then, you know. Um, and so, you know, uh, kept trying to chase behind him and all this other stuff. And then when I finally went ahead and let go... I allowed distractions, you know, instead of being kind. And then I kept, you know, like, oh, is this my soulmate? Oh, is this my soulmate? Oh, is this, this one? No, no. So after this last relationship, I was just like, you know what? I, I, you know who it is. And that's why things don't work out with the other people. If you've met your soulmate and you're running from your soulmate because a soulmate is the only one that really and truly can hurt you deeply. It really and truly can. It can tear you apart. But I also know that we needed to separate so that I, so that if he were to hurt me again, I would be strong enough to walk away, even from a soulmate connection. And I think that that's really what it's all about, you know. But that is a person that you want to love for the rest of your life. It is, like... That, that's the person who has loved you wholly and completely, unconditionally, and continues to, you know? Because even when y'all not together, y'all still thinking about each other. That's still the person that is in the back of your mind. Everyone else in my life disappeared. <laughs> All the memories, 
from everybody else disappeared. Even the man from 2019, after it ended up in 2020, I was able to just go on with my life. But there's always that one, excuse me, there's always that one person that remains there. And that, that's how I know. So, you know, that's a lot of the reasons why I stopped entertaining other people, you know. Um, and I am more interested in being their platonic friend because I know what I want. I know the kind of love that I want. And, you know, I, I've given people too many chances because, you know, it's like, well, let me show you. That I, that I can love you. And it's like, you know what? It's always missing something. You know what I'm saying? Like, with your soulmate, like I said earlier, it's holistic. It's on every level. But with, other, with the other people, it was always missing something. It was always missing something. So, you know, that's why I just stopped. And it's like, I'm not waiting on a reunion I am, you know what, I got a, I got a 12 year old, she's about to be 13, these are teenage years, you know, that's my focus right now, and I've grown more and more accustomed to not having someone, and I needed that, you know why, because I spent half of my life with somebody, you know, and I haven't always known who my soulmate was because I was fighting it. I hadn't surrendered to that love and I finally surrendered to that love, whether we're together or not. That doesn't matter. I know who he is now, you know? And I'm not, go I'm go not running back to my past. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna continue to move forward. And I'll wait for him to take the leap and come towards me, you know? Because I think we both are well aware of our feelings towards each other at this point in the journey, you know? Um, you know, I've been writing songs and letters to him before I even met him, you know? And even more since 2015, you know? Knowing him and interacting with him helped me to heal, helps me to heal every single day. And I've told him that too. Like, right, it doesn't matter if we're together or not. Just having, having you here <laughs> helps me every day, you know? And, you know, I think I was so focused on the physical aspect of it that... I was stressing about that. But the most amazing thing is that even if you're not with your soulmate or they're no longer living, their soul is always with you, always. Because the only difference is, is that your soul was in a different body. That's it. Your soul is always with you. So you always have that person with you and therefore you can never lose your soulmate. You can never truly lose your soulmate. Even if your soulmate is in another relationship with somebody else, they'll get hurt. They'll get hurt because that's not the relationship they're supposed to be in anyway. But it is it's not the same hurt as a soulmate. A soulmate can crush the fuck out of you, right? But you're trusting that person enough to say, you know what? Actually, what I'm saying is I prefer the soulmate pain over the abusive pain, you know, because the soulmate pain helps me to grow. It helps me to heal from my shit. And the abusive pain keeps me in the same comfort zone, keeps me in the same bubble. And I'm used to that pain, right? I'm used to the pain of addiction. I'm used to the pain of abuse. I'm used to the pain of betrayal and lies, right? But that gross shit, whoo, it hurts. <laughs> that is a pain unlike any other pain. And a lot of people run from that. 
you know, it's pain. That healing, healing from your old shit, that pain hurts. Yeah. But I prefer that. I prefer that, you know, and I don't I don't call it a twin flame. I call him, I, he's my divine masculine. I'm his divine feminine and he's my divine feminine and I'm his divine masculine because we both have those energies. You know, we're both born with those energies, you know, and a soulmate relationship is one that understands that some days he's going to be 100 percent masculine and I need to be 100 percent feminine. And in other days, he's going to need for me to care for his feminine energy and my masculine energy. You know, so um, this doesn't make him less of a man. It doesn't make me less of a woman. It's it's a divine connection. It's a truly divine connection. And we take care of each other. We take care of each other. You know, it, it's really about teamwork. You know, um, a divine masculine is secure with his divine feminine being ambition and having a drive. In fact, it turns him on because he knows that she is self-aware and therefore she is secure in her divine feminine energy. You know, they're both leaders. But because they are healthy, happy, and holistic on their own, they don't compete with each other. They realize the importance of supporting each other and using the, their gifts collectively and being each other's biggest fan. No, it's not about it's not about using our gifts for ourselves. It's about using our gifts for the collective and helping everyone to step into their own power, step into their own uniqueness, to become the truest version of themselves. You know, it's it's about what can we give in service? How can I serve others? You know, to become healthier, happier, and whole on their own self-love healing journey. Because that's what we're all doing, whether we realize it or not. We're all on a journey back to love and healing because there has been so much hatred in the world. You know, there's... When you are in a, a divine relationship, you recognize that there's no I in team, you know? That no one wins unless we all win, you know, because we can't all win. Um, especially when, when love is bigger than ego and power, you know? When we recognize the importance of submitting and surrendering to each other. Because... The divine masculine is not greater than the divine feminine. They're both spiritual, powerful, loving spiritual beings. And they both walk in that equally. Um, you know, a, a, divine, a divine connection is a divine team. And we work together collectively to resolve conflict in a healthy way, you know. We figure out how to collaborate our needs, you know, as a team instead of trying to compete and, and trying to gain the upper hand on the other person. A divine team never seeks to tear each other down with, with, with harmful words and harmful actions because they're too busy, busy building each other up, loving each other. So, how can you attract your divine true soulmate? So, as I've stated before, I started loving myself unconditionally in 2006. Um, but I didn't decide to take the deeper dive until I met my soulmate. Once I met my soulmate, then that was like, like it really did. It flashed a light and it was like, that was the only man that I was like, you know what? I got to, I got to cut this shit out you know what I'm saying like I gotta let this shit go because all this shit that's going on in, in, on inside of me it's gonna hurt this other person and I don't want to hurt this other person even though I did it because I was selfish because I was selfish and still trying to hold on instead of saying you know what I trust God I know that this is but I didn't know that he was my soulmate I didn't know that 
I knew he was someone special, but I didn't know, or I probably didn't believe. And I had to really go and learn to love myself unconditionally, learn to love the divine within me, to learn to love my divine masculine that's in me. And that's when I knew that's my soulmate. So, you know, you have to learn how to love yourself unconditionally beyond abuse and work through your traumas and insecurities. So you stop attracting karmic partners and people who are sent to distract you from loving yourself unconditionally. And if you are ready to love yourself unconditionally beyond abuse and you want a free trial, subscribe to my newsletter and receive your access to a private, safe, and secure community. In there, I'm going to be uh, once a month doing lives, but I will be um, doing videos every single day on um, on the 30-day uh, workbook, you know, the questions that come with the workbook. So um, it's a 30-day trial, you know. If you want to stay in that group, um, we'll just repeat every 30 days, you know, until you are ready to dive deeper. And if you, once, you're, once you've had, you know, a few months on your own self-love healing journey and you're ready to go deeper in a supportive community, then you can um, receive a discount, a, a cheaper price to join the paid community um, because that one goes a lot deeper. We're working very deeply on the individual pillars and so that is a paid community because um, I want you to get out what you put in, okay? So, um, and that one, there's meetings twice a month, um, live meetings, but in the, in the free group, I will do monthly live meetings um, for anyone who joins. So, we have come to the end of the, the podcast, the uh, broadcast, and if you are listening by uh, on Anchor or Google Podcasts or Spotify or Pocket Cast, uh, please go ahead and share this episode with anyone you feel may uh, enjoy. If you are watching on YouTube, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and share to anyone you think may get some value out of this episode so i would love to know what you guys think um i thank you all for joining me and as always i am going to uh, talk about a mother's touch inc it is a community organization that assists men and women financially who are leaving domestic violence relationships and having a hard time financially it also provides loving support and mentoring for any person who desires to live a healthy happy and holistic life with a mental barrier the Loving Yourself Unconditionally Beyond Abuse Facebook community and organization was created based on the desire to be the community and organization that I needed when I found myself struggling financially after leaving an unhealthy and abusive relationship. The organization is also a proud collaborator with community organizations whose mission is assisting families and co-parents with becoming the healthiest and truest version of themselves. Healthy adults raise healthy, happy, and holistic children who have a healthy love of themselves and others. If you or someone you know is in need of financial assistance, or if you are interested in donating to our mission, please visit uh, www.amotherstouchinc.org to fill out the financial assistance form or to make a donation. All donations are greatly accepted and appreciated. And before we go, you know what I have to do. I have to send us out with the prayer of love. Dear universe, oh, I love you with everything that I am, every fiber of my being speaks your name. I love you more than, than life itself. You are my world, my life, my everything. You are the air that I breathe. You are my prana, my chi, the song that I sing, my melody, my harmony. I love you and I thank you. There is no greater love than the love that you have for me. And I love you just as deeply. Just as deeply. You have all of me, my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul. 
<clears throat> I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful because you get sick and tired of being sick and tired and wondering why relationships aren't working out for me. It's because you have not tapped into your soul's love. You haven't learned to, to love both of the energies within you. You haven't learned how to love yourself unconditionally beyond abuse and take care of your every need before you get in a relationship because then you're expecting someone else to take care of those needs. And, and we should. But we, all, we automatically know that instinctively when we meet the right one. There's never... There's never any, any need to, to put extra pressure on them. Yes, we can speak our needs because they're not going to get it 100% right all the time either. And that's why it's important for us to love ourselves enough to know that on the days when they're having their moments, when they're having their days, that's our cue to take care of ourselves that day, to love ourselves that day. We've been doing it the whole time while we've been single. So on the days when that person needs their time, needs their, their self-care time, then you go and take care of yourself too. Just realizing Realizing that more, especially where past relationships are concerned, especially where my soulmate is concerned. Putting too much pressure on a person to be my everything. When they can be my everything without being my everything. And I know that sounds contradictory to other people, but when we make you our everything, when we make ourselves which is you, because you reside inside of us. When we make ourselves our everything, when we put that pressure on ourselves to make ourselves happy, to depend on ourselves for happiness, we don't put that pressure on other people. We just love people. We just enjoy people. We appreciate people for being in our lives. I'm so thankful for this journey for everything that I have gone through because it has been the greatest teacher and it is a privilege and an honor to teach others who are where I was. That it added value to my life and I never saw that. And now I can teach others how to get through because it's not just about going to sit in a church pew. Re reading some words that you don't even believe yourself. It's about having your own biblical experience. It's about going through your own wilderness. It's about being in your own pit and meeting God at the bottom and building that foundation first. Because no relationship will ever be safe and stable and secure without each person having a firm footing, a firm relationship with you first. A healthy relationship, a healthy relationship with themselves and you. And it won't stand on just physical attraction alone. You have to get to know someone on a mental, emotional, and spiritual level before you even go to physical intimacy. Because you have to know what this person deal, deals with on a daily basis. And most of us are too ashamed of our past, too ashamed of who we've been, what we've done, how we've acted.
to reveal that to someone else. So we would rather just jump in, have sex, and, and, and pray that everything works out and, and it doesn't. You gotta get to know that person. Because even best friends sometimes have days where they're not best friends. <laughs> I thank you for being my best friend, though. I thank you for being my greatest, my truest confidant and my greatest supporter, my lover and my man. I am yours wholeheartedly, mind, body, and soul. Whether I live in famine or whether I am feasting, whether I live in abundance or in need, whether there is sunshine or rain, whether I am in, in pain or I'm joyful, Because I know that joy is everlasting, but we, we, have to have, we have to experience pain, grow this pain, and we grow at every level. And so we got to get, we got we to get used to, to, to the, the pain of growth and, and let go of the pain of abuse and trauma. I love you, God. I love you so much, and it is a privilege and an honor to serve other people in this way. I am grateful. I haven't always seen it that way, but I'm grateful that my story can help someone else, even if it's just one person, then it has been fulfilled. But my greatest desire is to inspire my children. That's first, because they can go out and change the lives of others. They can go out and share that love that I taught them. And I love you for that. I'm thankful for second chances. Because I knew with Aaliyah that was my second chance. And I love you deeply. I am so abundantly blessed above all I could ever ask, think, or imagine. I'm thankful and grateful for another day. So let's rock this day out. Let's get her done. And so be it. And so it is. Amen. Amen. I thank you all for being here. I want you to go out. Have an awesome, amazing, and beautiful day today. From my heart to yours, as always, namaste. If you experienced rejection, abandonment, trauma, or abuse as a child, you may find it difficult to create a healthy, happy, and holistic life. You are not alone. I am Coach Susie, and I am a survivor of addiction and narcissistic domestic violence abuse. I was raised by a mother who experienced narcissistic personality disorder, and I experienced every type of abuse. I was rejected, abandoned, and traumatized before the age of 10. As I grew older, I attracted these same type of relationships into my life because this was my life. It was all I knew and it was what I was accustomed to until I introduced myself to something different. In 2015, I left a 20 year unhealthy and abusive relationship with a man who struggles with narcissistic personality disorder. And I began a journey into loving myself unconditionally. It took me five years to accomplish living a happy, healthy, and holistic life. And that was primarily due to the lack of financial and educational resources for people like me who were severely traumatized as children and grew up in impoverished neighborhoods. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement was created from the mind of a traumatized child who struggled for years with self-doubt and low self-esteem. But I learned to love herself unconditionally beyond past abuse and thrive successfully in life with PTSD, bipolar disorder, and ADHD. I struggled to love myself unconditionally due to the mental and emotional abuse I received as a child. The voices of doubt, fear, and not good enough would constantly haunt me until I began to change my mind.
the Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement is a community of people who desire to learn practical and effective ways to love themselves unconditionally beyond abuse. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement is not about chasing perfection and trying to be perfect. It's about learning to love yourself unconditionally in every area of your life, no matter what that looks like. It's about becoming the healthiest, happiest, and truest version of yourself, no matter what that looks like. If you are ready to learn how to love yourself unconditionally beyond abuse, pre-register today at suzysuttles.com. Everyone has something to teach us. My question to you is, are you ready to learn?